Hello everyone, welcome to part 11 of this ongoing series on operating systems. So in this video, we'll be talking a bit about uh, system calls. So let's get started with the introduction of system calls. Uh, so in part 9, we've already talked about the various services which are offered by operating systems. Uh, so in order to like access these services which are offered by operating systems, there must be some kind of way uh, using which uh, the user programs can like access these uh, operating system services directly. So it is system calls which provide an interface. Uh, I mean, uh, these system calls are like uh, an interface which provide access to these uh, services. So these system calls are basically uh, functions or uh, you can like call them uh, routines which are like written in uh, C or C++. And uh, system calls might also be written in assembly level languages uh, in some cases where uh, the services which are provided by uh, OS are more related to uh, these low level tasks. For example, like uh, accessing hardware directly uh, it could be like say some register or memory. So these system calls are basically function calls uh, which a user program can like call in the code to access, uh, to access these uh, services which are provided by operating systems. We'll just uh, take an example of uh, one of the services uh, which is provided by like uh, operating system to understand how these system calls are used by the OS. Uh, we'll consider uh, the service of uh, file copy. So when we talk about file copy, uh, it is uh, essentially uh, meaning that uh, we read one file, say file one, and then uh, write the uh, contents of that file to some, some other file. So all we do is just read file one and write the same to file two. So this is uh, what file copy service is about. Uh, but when we uh, like talk about file copy, in a broad sense, it is just this, but uh, internally there are a lot of uh, system calls which are issued by the OS. So we'll just uh, have a look at uh, uh, the series of system calls which are like actually being issued by the OS in order to perform this uh, copy operation. So internally, uh, the first thing which uh, needs to be done is basically ac acquire the input and output file names. So OS must know what is the input file name, that is the file uh, which is the like the source, and the output file name where uh, which is the destination file uh, which needs to be like written. Uh, so, this acquiring is again based on uh, the UI. So, in cases where uh, the operating system is uh, CLI based, uh, there the operating system would uh, issue a system call in order to like uh, to write a prompting message asking for the file names. Uh, so, use, since the CLI based uh, UI expects the user to type in uh, the file names, so it is asking the user to uh, like enter in the file names, the input as well as the output files. But in order to like uh, write this prompting message asking for file names, OS would uh, issue internally a system call to do this. Now, once the you know, user likes uh, inputs uh, the input and output file for this copy operation uh, in CLI-based uh, OSs, uh, OS would uh, again issue another system call to read the file names which are input through the keyboard. So this is uh, regarding uh, the CLI based OS, but in cases where the operating system is uh, say GUI based, uh, there it would be a bit different because uh, we have uh, pointing devices and menus in that case. So uh, operating system would basically uh, try to display a menu of files uh, in a window and then uh, user would have to like select the files uh, through keyboard or uh, mouse. And uh, again, the same uh, process would happen for the output file as well. Uh, I mean, for the output file as well, uh, as well as uh, this input file. Now for these two cases, I mean, for these two uh, steps, uh, in case of, of GUI based OSs, uh, this OS would basically uh, try to like issue multiple IO related system calls, like uh, displaying uh, say to the monitor and then uh, taking in the uh, whatever uh, like so user selects the file. So those files which are selected by OS must be uh, got from the user. So here basically IO related system calls are uh, issued internally to do these two operations. So once the input and output file names are like acquired, the next step is to basically open the input file and then create another output file. So here again, in order to uh, do these two things, uh, OS would internally issue many system calls. So we'll just try to see what all uh, system calls are issued. Now there are like a sequence of system calls which, which are like issued uh, internally by the OS uh, to just open the input file and create the output file. Uh, so there is like a separate system call just to open the file. Now uh, when, when we try to open a file, there might be some kind of uh, error handling mechanism which would be required. 
like for example say the input file is isn't even there in the like system so if the input file doesn't exist then uh, there must be another system call which needs to be uh, issued uh, which tries to like uh, uh, print out some appropriate message saying that the input file isn't there and then uh, after uh, the message is uh, like printed there must be another uh, system call which must be issued in order to terminate this uh, whole copy operation abnormally uh, and uh, if at all this input file exists then there must be another system call which needs to be issued to create this output file so assuming uh, output file uh, so yeah again uh, similar to input file creating output file will uh, again uh, like require its own error handling mechanisms say for example this output file name already exists so in that case uh, os requires i mean we we need to have some kind of uh, 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 message which needs to be displayed saying that uh, the output file which we are trying to create already exists so uh, operating system would uh, basically try to like issue another system call internally uh, to print out that message and uh, after that message is displayed uh, operating system would again issue another system call to terminate the process of uh, this file copy but this termination would be abnormal and uh, there might be other uh, error handling mechanisms where uh, operating system might like issue some system call to delete the existing file or uh, it can issue another uh, system call where wherein uh, it can like replace the existing file with the new file so depending on the type of handling which is there uh, it can like do any of these uh, operations now assuming both the files are acquired and uh, we'll just say that both the files are like proper so we have the input file uh, open and we have already created the output file now uh, the next step would be uh, to issue another system call to read the input file and uh, another system call would be required to write to the output file again there might be issues where uh, reading fails or there might be some errors while writing like for example uh, say this uh, disk capacity is like uh, reached uh, it has reached to its maximum capacity so there we won't be able to like issue writes so uh, apart from that uh, let's say both uh, this read as well as write was successful and uh, file 1 contains were like copied uh, entirely to file 2 in that case uh, since this copy operation is done there must be another system call which needs to be issued to close both the files uh, say this was also successful then there must be another system call where uh, Uh, the OS is like uh, trying to print some appropriate message saying that uh, this copy operation was successful. Uh, after that, uh, finally, uh, operating system would uh, like issue another system call wherein it uh, terminates this uh, entire file copy operation. But uh, this time, the termination would be now. So just for uh, this service, uh, this file copy service, uh, internally, operating system would have to like make uh, these many system calls. so this is like internal to the operating system we never care about uh, what all system calls are like being issued internally uh, we only uh, need to like uh, get the service done i mean we we only require the service so uh, there is like a problem uh, in order to like just have this file copy operation we cannot remember what all uh, sequence of uh, system calls need to be issued so for that reason uh, we have something called uh, application programming interface yeah before that uh, here we already have like uh, uh, a diagram which is showing how this uh, file copy is happening so we have the source file and the this, this destination file and here is like the uh, sequence of system calls which are being issued just to copy uh, the source file to this destination file so we'll just uh, we'll first acquire the input file name uh, we'll like uh, in in case of uh, cli based uh, oss will write a prompt to the screen asking for the input file name we'll accept the input again the same thing will happen for the output file name uh, then we'll open the uh, input file and if at all it doesn't exist then uh, program uh, termination should happen uh, it will abort because uh, this is like an uh, abnormal uh, termination and then uh, if if at all this file uh, input file uh, open and uh, if at all this like open operation was successful then we'll have to create uh, the output file Uh, here again uh, if the file is already existing then we'll have to abort then we'll uh, enter into a loop wherein we uh, read uh, the input file line by line and then write it to the output file and then uh, until read fails that is until we reach the end of file in uh, input file we have to like keep on uh, looping around and once we come out of this loop we'll close uh, uh, like both the files and then uh, we'll write a completion message to the screen and terminate normally so this is the entire system call sequence which needs to be issued just to copy 
uh, one file to another file. Now, since we cannot remember uh, all sequences for all the services which are provided by OS, uh, there is like a uh, there is some way with which uh, we only have to like issue uh, an API. Instead of issuing this entire sequence, we only have to issue uh, this API. So API is basically uh, application programming interface, which is like a function which handles the entire sequence of uh, uh, system calls which need to be issued. So in order to uh, like call uh, this copy operation, uh, there might be uh, an API which says uh, copy. So user can just call this uh, copy API and uh, in turn, internally, uh, this copy API will handle all the various uh, system call sequences which need to be issued uh, to like uh, get the service done. So that is how these APIs help. Now coming to system call interface. So when we talk about programming languages, so these programming languages basically have a runtime support system uh, which provides this system call interface. So uh, system call interface can be thought of as a link uh, to the various system calls which are provided by the operating system. So we can like think of it as a mapping between the API and the system calls, like the series of system calls which need to be issued uh, to get that uh, service done. So what the system call interface does is basically it intercepts the uh, API function calls and uh, it calls the respective uh, system calls in the OS. So this system call interface, uh, this SEI, it basically uh, is a, it maintains a table wherein each of the system calls which need to be issued for a particular API uh, are, rep are represented by like numbers. So SCI would uh, know based on what uh, API is being called, uh, what is the corresponding uh, system call which needs to be uh, like uh, issued. So this uh, table is maintained in the next slide I think I have, yeah. So in this SCI, uh, we are like trying to uh, show how a user application is basically calling this API called open and uh, the system call interface would basically uh, have this table wherein uh, all these system calls are represented by numbers and uh, in the user mode the user will just write a program and then uh, somewhere he'll just call this open API and open would uh, basically call this uh, system call interface which is a uh, like a runtime support uh, which is like a part of runtime support system of uh, uh, the programming language which is used to write this particular code here. So this open uh, system call interface would basically intercept this open API and then it will uh, just call the sequence of uh, uh, like the system calls which need to be issued just to like uh, uh, get this uh, service done. Uh, so that is how these uh, SCIs work. Uh, this would be more uh, like uh, internal. So this is uh, like internally it will be handled that is it is a part of basically the kernel mode. So in the user mode, we only have to issue this open API, but internally all the various system calls will be called. So yeah, that's it uh, in this video. Uh, thank you for watching. In the next video, we'll be uh, talking about the various types of system calls which uh, the OS has to offer.